strike of a light pole. I just air it out and leave with the mic broke. Your micro, I'm hard body like Tyco. Heavy metal Chevys with nitro. Addicted to the vapors of paper. Hypnotic to the thirst. I'm pulling off criminal capers. I know the cocaine crackery stinks, but that's what it is. Surrounded by the khakis and mints. We move. Welcome back to Developer Commentary. I am Mike Stout. I am Tony Garcia. And we have a special episode today, Tony. This one's special? This is a very special episode. Are we going to learn about bullying? We're going to learn about friendship. Okay. Think, and uh, and about the, the cost of success. The co- oh, wow. This uh, is really a heavy episode. I thought the last one yeah. was a heavy episode. But um, now... In the interest of full disclosure, we're going to learn about none of those things. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll probably put that as a footnote. Uh this level was really interesting. Um, it's our arena level, but it has like the little path of death thing involved with it also. Uh huh. That has like ran- random paths that you can go through the, the path of death. And uh, this level was the first level that we ever focus tested in block form. So, oh wow! Uh, for, that for must p- have gone over well. Oh yeah. <laughs> so for for people who don't know, um, when we when we start making these levels, when, when they're first designed, uh, and also usually when they first come to programming, they're just cubes. You know, uh, a, a designer has laid down blank, solid textured cubes all throughout the level. So, you know, this, the, this platform in front of you is just a cube. This down here is untextured, you know. Uh, the artists go in afterwards and make magic. You know, that, uh, that cave wall in the distance doesn't exist, right? Mm-hmm. So, um... We had just a gray cube version of this level, and uh, we we needed to make sure that this gameplay was plausible before we asked an artist to put weeks of his time into arting it. Oh God. Uh, so we actually tested the block version of this level, which we never did because if there's one thing that will get people to hate a level, it's not having art in it. <laughs> Um, and there is some value to doing user testing in block levels. I mean, there's a ton of value to it, but oftentimes, oh fuck, Mike, you're really bad at this. But oftentimes, uh, it is much more difficult to get people not to hate something, right? So if you're the designer who's in charge of it, you've got to be, oh god, you've got to be really nervous. Okay, Tony, your turn. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess the thing is. You said that there's a lot of value to it, but there's a lot of value if you can get worthwhile information. Yes. And it's hard to get worthwhile information out of people. Wow, even with not talking, you're really bad at this. Yeah, so it's very hard to get valuable information out of people when you're looking at it in block form because I don't want to disparage players, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Are you going to say that they're idiots, Tony? No, I'm not going to say that. Are you I'm going to say that to... there's there's something about holding a controller that turns an otherwise in, in intelligent human being into a fucking retard? What I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to say that either. That's what you're saying. I, let it be known I'm not saying that at all. I, I didn't say any of that. That's what you were going to say. It's, <laughs> it's very hard for people when playing games. It's a talent when playing games to have imagination for how things are going to be and not how things are. And lots of lots of developers even have trouble with that. Well, yeah. I mean, I, that's the internal struggle between, like, producers and developers. You talk to any developer, that is the internal struggle. They with never, with never want to show a producer anything that isn't completely finished. Right. Because, I mean, and to be fair to producers uh, and, and to, to players as well is that why should they have to imagine how it's supposed to be? They are, they're investing real money in a real product. They don't want you to give them your ideas. They want you to give them a product. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's the problem with sort of focus testing things is when you, even if you make it as clear as possible, that this is not the final version, it's going to change. Please overlook this, this, and this. It, there, it requ- it, yeah, it, it requires a skill to do that. Right, exactly. And so when you're dealing with sort of these blocked levels, you're really just inviting that sort of criticism of, it just felt really unfinished. <laughs> and, and it's like, yeah, we know that. 
can you just try to look over that sort of factor? And getting people to overlook that is really hard. Uh, yeah, agreed. Uh, and I think so. So poor Colin had to uh, had to bear the brunt of that in this in this game. What were you gonna say? No, I was just about to say that's. I mean, all focus tests are like that in general. So I can't even imagine what one would be like with. It's not as polished as we normally send our focus test stuff. I can tell you exactly how it went. <laughs> um, we, we, we had them do it for like 10 minutes and then stopped. Really? Yeah. You just uh, gave up. Uh, no, no, that wasn't what happened. I'm lying. Uh, it, they played through it. It was rated the worst out of all of the levels that, that we had. But because Colin was there watching them play it, we didn't have to rely on their impressions of... Uh, of what the game was like we didn't have to say what did you think of that level he just watched them play and then when they got stuck he was able to say oh they're getting stuck for oh fuck they're getting stuck for this reason and uh in that case it's because that's total bullshit you know on the bright side we are refilling your ammo every time you start the level yeah I, that's that's a real bright side well I, you know it means we've evolved I suppose. On on Ratchet One, you'd have to. I would be out of money because I needed to buy ammo all those times now. But now, you know, we just refill you for free because it's not really that fun to die and then also realize you wasted all your ammo. I suppose not. In Ratchet, our philosophy has. I mean, we let you keep your experience. We let you keep your bolts. Why not let you keep? You know, why why not just refill you? But oh. you know what you know what you should use against those laser beams, Mike? What? The refractor. Oh shit! It's especially true because I designed them to to work that way. Yeah. You would think I'd remember. All right, I, Tony. I need you to talk about stuff because I'm just gonna. Knuckle I'm down just here. in shock as how badly, how poorly you're doing here. I, I really just cannot believe it. If you think this is bad, you should have been at the focus tests. <laughs> I, I, I'm really sad. You know what we're going to have to do? This is going to have to be our, one of our very special episodes. Is that we have to show this footage to Colin and to Jared. <laughs> and just record them depressed. <laughs> that you cannot <laughs> succeed at so it's this like level. we do like a commentary on a commentary or something. Yeah, just they don't have to listen to our commentary. Just watching you fail, I think, will bring back horrible memories of players who just don't get it. And I think that can only be good, right? That can only be good. It, it's only going to lead to interesting commentary. You're at the halfway point, I think, Mike. Oh, then that means I must have died before, way past the halfway point. I like that arrow. I like that arrow a lot. It's cool, huh? I'm pretty sure those crates are act tuned in. <laughs> I mean, they would have no, to be, right? They, they, they would have to be. No, actually, they cannot be. Oh, really? Yeah, because um, uh, the segments lock when you first enter them. Oh, I see. We didn't have any capability for tuning a segment you'd already seen. Well, the next few segments are going to be a lot easier for you. <laughs> yeah, in this game, uh, the way it worked was um, when, you, uh, when you would come into a segment... It would lock it into a mode, like, say, easy, which is what the next segment's going to be. Uh, although arena modes were untuned. Uh, and then it would remove enemies from the game. So there would just be enemies you wouldn't fight. So if there was a setup that had three guys with guns in it, you would instead get one guy with a gun and some swarmers or I something see. like that. So the setups would actually change to be easier. Uh, this was actually different than how they did it in some of the later games, like uh, Resistance or... Uh, uh, Ratchet future. So here's another thing, Mike. Yeah. Uh, we haven't touched on this. Multiple weapon upgrades. Yeah. How about that? Uh, I don't know. How about that, Tony? 
So where did that, again, you're the ones that sat in all these wonderful design meetings that I was not allowed to go to. Okay, look, I, I just want to stop. Programmer input. I want to stop you right there and say that I am terribly offended at the tone you took to say wonderful <laughs> design meeting. Uh, I think, I think Tony, you are unfairly disparaging your friends in the design community, and they deserve an apology. Uh, no, I, I disagree. I disagree <laughs> entirely with that. Uh, so let's see. Before you decided to be a complete asshole, what were we doing? Uh, so. Where where did the uh, where did it come from that hey let's try to do five weapon upgrades as opposed to one because the programmers that do the effects clearly don't have enough work and they want to do five weapon <laughs> upgrades. Uh, I think it was mainly that um, uh, Inferno Power. I love that was, he has that ex extra wrench that does nothing. It's just so good. It uh, I think it came from how well received the upgrades were in the first game. Uh, it also solves a problem that we had in Ratchet 2 uh, that we we don't have as much in this game, and that's um, so we needed to obsolete weapons in order to m encourage you to buy new weapons. Mm -hmm. But uh, in Ratchet 2, we didn't have uh, we 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 only had very blunt tools for doing that, right? Because if your weapon only upgrades once. We don't really have a lot of control over how long that's going to keep you. Yeah. Uh huh. So, uh, because now in this grade, in, in this game, they all have many upgrades. We can sort of drip feed you improvements to the weapons over the course of many levels before we obsolete them. So it actually, it meant that we had finer control over the balancing. But the main reason we decided to do it to start with is the upgrades were just so cool in Ratchet 2. And adding a ton of extra upgrades this time meant that really just the whole experience was better. I mean, people like this game a lot more than Ratchet 2 because the upgrade reward loop was just so immediate. You know, you were upgrading a weapon or buying a new weapon or, uh, uh, you know, gaining a new nanotech level. Like, it was very addictive. You kept wanting to play because you were always just about to level something up. We miss we you were talking over the first appearance of Courtney Gears. That's true. Also, the first appearance of the Tira guys. Another That's one right. of the most. <laughs> and the Courtney Gears scenes. leads to. I'm sorry, the crotchetizer. Yeah. Um, are you talking about the Courtney Gears dance? Uh, I am talking music about video? the Courtney Gears. Do you do? So, uh, just to skip ahead, there was a video or an audio recording of Paul and doing. Brad, yeah. Yeah, is, was it a video or was it just audio? It was just audio. It was just audio. Do you still have that audio? I do. Has it ever been put out there? To... Yes. Oh, it has been put out there. Yeah, it was released uh, on the Insomniac website back in the day. But I don't know how many people uh, actually got it. It's it's a great video, <laughs> or a great audio recording. Yeah, it's an MP3. Of the process that came into that song. You know what? When we When we actually record that scene here... I'll just dub over Brad <laughs> singing it. I'm sure he will uh, really appreciate that. The Tear Guys was another meetings. one of your things, right? If not your idea, you at least had to do the Tear Guys segments. Yeah, and uh, uh, I also ha I also designed the gadget, like, uh, on paper. Uh -huh. So I, c I sort of came up with what it was. Um, it The, the Tear Guys was not, <laughs> was not as big of a success as uh, uh, as the say the refractor was gadget wise um, oh my the Look terrible two. Oh shit uh, you know what this level even looks like ratchet deadlocked yeah it does the art style is so similar oh fuck screw you fat robot so that whip that she has that's the realistic whip that they were working on. Right. It actually did get in. It's not the ratchet weapon, but it's totally being used here the, for her weapon. Right, because uh, in this in this area, it's all... Uh, it's all flat ground. Yeah, so you can actually do that. Oh, wait, the infector's a terrible idea. I'm glad we talked about that before. That gives us a sense of continuity throughout these episodes. <laughs> It's almost like we're not just making this shit up. It's almost that way. 
Oh, is this the first appearance of the ground reticle rockets? Uh, I think so, yeah. I think this may be the first I time. I love those it. ground reticle rockets. Oh, yeah. So any anyone who's been following my career over the year, every game I've worked on has had those rockets in it since this <laughs> game <laughs> because those rockets are so good. They're, uh, uh, they're just a great idea. Um, okay, Tony, we need something cool to talk about. I need to get excited again. I've been failing too much. My voice is starting to flag. <laughs> Hook me up, dude. Come on. Uh, it's the tiger time. Come on, man. Is it, you know what? Dun, this would dun, be another dun. great time for a little You're the Best oh. to start kicking in. <laughs> so here's the way I see it. This track right now, win, lose, is going to have You're the Best playing over it. <laughs> and if you lose... While you're the best is playing over, you are going to look like a total asshole. <laughs> that Joe Esposito couldn't is, get you over the hump. Is he's he's going to be rolling in his grave, is that? Yeah. And he's, I don't even think he's dead. No matter what, that's what's going to be playing right now. <laughs> what is playing right now? That's true, Tony. Don't, don't destroy the illusion that that's we're right. putting this stuff in afterwards. And I'm certain that knowledge alone will take you through this encounter. Oh yeah, I'm, that knowledge alone will, will not contribute in any way to my inevitable fucking defeat. You know what? It, the, you know what the real problem is, Mike? What's the You're real problem? You're using the Halifax. <laughs> hey! I haven't won yet, Tony. There's still one more. But the nanotech increase is definitely going to help. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh come on! Fuck. I have like no more. Yes! Woo! I'm the best around! Congratulations. Uh, See, I know uh, how to motivate people. I am the king at that. Do this or you are stupid. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, it, it really is amazing how much content we get out of these arenas. <laughs> it's true. Oh, I love the throw, the wrench throw with the plasma wave. I'm glad I could it do that for so you. so cool. Time. Of course you can. I've made that. That was full featured. But yeah, that looks so cool. Man, I love that. <laughs> I don't even care that I'm talking about my own stuff. The plasma whip. That looks cool. The plasma whip was one of those features that you don't really feel bad being proud of because it, it is legitimately super awesome. You know I think mean? so. Like I know that uh, just from from being your friend and and colleague for so long, that th this is a thing that you are genuinely proud of. Am I mischaracterizing it? No, I, I really am. I mean, him, this and uh, Doctor Nefarious are probably the two things I've heard you actually really enjoy about what you do. <laughs> it's right. There are two things in my life that I'm proud of. <laughs> one of them is the plasma whip, and the other one is Doctor Nefarious. That's that's not true. You're also proud of battle shots and and uh, beer chess. I am, but yeah, let's not talk about battle shots. That's a sore point. Oh, right? I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's still in the hands of criminals. Is it? <laughs> you know what? I think at this point, we the our audience deserves the story though. <laughs> I don't know how much of a story there is, but I ran across this picture on the internet. This is really, I don't know why we're talking about this. Nobody cares. <laughs> Let's just say, I'm just going to put it this way. I built a game. I love that game. And then my car got broken into and it was stolen. And I'm really upset about it. And just to give you an idea of what the game was, it was Battleship. It was a Battleship drinking game where the, the, the pegs and the board and everything were shot glasses. It's, it's brilliant. It's a brilliant idea. And I, I think you were proud of how it brought together every aspect of everything you've ever been good at. It, yeah, it's really, it was really just a nexus of my life up to this point. And then someone took it from your car and didn't take anything else that was valuable. It was, well, that's not even valuable. It's valuable in a sentimental sense. <laughs> but monetarily, it's worthless. So if, if anyone out there t is the thief who took it, you are fucking stupid. Yeah, I really just, you've done horrible, you've, you've brought pain into people's lives, is what you've done. And it wasn't, and wasn't, you've achieved nothing from it. Even, wasn't the, wasn't even the cop, uh, angry at him for being so stupid? Yeah, the cop was very upset <laughs> that he took the worst, the most worthless thing in my car and left everything else that had any value whatsoever. Right, like your collection of old magic cards. Right, just, I can't... <laughs> It's a sad. I'm, it's a sad state. I'm, I'm sorry to have brought it up, but it did come up organically. I feel. Uh, also, I do enjoy talking about things that cause you pain. 
Thank you, Mike. But it's for the viewers, Tony. They also enjoy it. Well, I'll take some solace in that. Like la last game when you were like really uncomfortable with that bit of work that you did. Oh wait, that never happened. That was only me. <laughs> uh, um, let's see. I, I think I'm done with uh, with arenas. Let's go back to the. Uh, let's go back to. The uh, well, then I think that means it's the end of an episode. Oh, uh, do I have to be that guy? You do. You're putting an end to it. Uh, we were having such a great time talking about Ratchet and Clank up your arsenal. This is and now it's over. This is and now we're done. This is and like now the, there will never be more episodes. This is like the scene in Mary Poppins where they're laughing and having a tea party on the ceiling, and then Mary Poppins has to be a wet blanket, and then they all get really sad. It's kind yeah. of like that. And That's what this is. And it's I'm exactly like that. And I'm Mary Poppins. You are. So for developer commentary, I'm no, Mary Poppins. No, say it like Mary Poppins would say it. What, like a Julie Andrews voice, or yeah? See, that's let's do your best one, <laughs> or or you can do the the chimney sweep voice. Can you do that one? Oh, like, like that one oh, works too. Like Dick Van Dyke's Cockney yeah, horrible let's, accent. Yeah, let's see how that goes. Oh, I can tell it. Okay, let's see. For for developer commentary, I am Mike Stout. <laughs> I'm Tony Garcia. And we'll catch you next time. Pip pip. That is horrible. That's pretty bad. Dick Van Dyke's accent was pretty horrible. To be to be fair. <laughs>